run on coffee. Love the aroma of the brew and your favorite part of the day is sipping a delicious cup of coffee. Then, this edition of Health Options is one you must watch as you will get to know about the good, the bad and the ugly side of one of the most popular beverage in the world. Now, asked to give your opinion on Nigerian nurses, what will it be? Positive or otherwise? Stay with us as we beam our searchlight on quality assurance in the nursing profession. It's glad to have you join us on this week's edition of Health Options. Welcome to the program. I am Rabi Abdullah. <music> health options and we're looking at quality assurance in the nursing profession. We first of all take you to the streets to know what people have to say about Nigerian nurses. They are competent in what they are doing but most of these nurses end up leaving Nigeria to other countries to uh, practice. So government should try to put uh, that in place so that our nurses can practice. They are good, especially the metros. Mm -hmm. Before one will be a nurse, you must be somebody who is a humble and sympathetic. They, you know, they attended to me when I go to them, when occasion demands, and, you know, I enjoy the treatment they give to me. There are some complaining that maybe some, they are very harsh, they don't attend to patients, this and that, but me, I have not had, I have not had such an encounter. Nigerians there with divergent opinions about Nigerian nurses. Joining me in the studio to discuss quality assurance in the nursing profession is the Secretary General and Registrar of the Nurses and Midwifery Council of Nigeria, Farouk Umar Abu Bakr. Welcome to Health Options, Mano Farouk. Thank you. All right. Um, we're discussing um, a critical you know, element of uh, health uh, professionals, yeah. talking about nurses. Okay. I don't know, I just love nurses. I love to see them wearing their sparkling white uniform and all of that. So, uh, but somehow there's been tales not too pleasant about Nigerian nurses. Mm -hmm. Let's begin with that. A lot of people have uh, one or two not too good to hear things about nurses, especially their attitude in hospitals. Can we start from there? Why do some nurses tend to be cantankerous in their behavior towards patients? All right, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to speak on this area of uh, our professional endeavor. As you rightly said, the attitude of nurses in the hospital have been a major concern of the public. And uh, these have been a problem that is even given concern to the council. And that's why, in that direction, we have intensified effort to ensure nurses who are given adequate training and retraining in terms of their ethics and ensure that uh, they should be modified in terms of the attitude, in terms of approach while handling patient because it's the area of concern of patient. And in line with that, we make sure that uh, within the, the time from your school, you must undergo <coughs> what is the part of continuous mandatory for patient program that enrich your knowledge and skills all aim to, in, to change their attitude positive toward client and patient when it comes to hospital. And this is what the council has been doing. And in line with that, we also ensure that uh, nurses must attend mandatory professional development program and that attracts a minimum of six credit before you are practicing license is also renewed. All it is aimed to, in, to change their attitude to positive in order to be able to give quality care to the client and public of Nigerians. Okay, so as a council, what, how do you sanction errant nurses? Those who had gone, you know, you know, uh, gone foul of uh, the virtues that Florence Nightingale you know, stood for? Yeah, well, the, as a council, we, it is clear, the laws that established the act is clearly state that uh, at each state of federation we have a standing committee referred as the National Military Committee. And these committees is chaired by the directors of each state. And they are expected to coordinate the entire nursing activities, both education and practice. And they are expected, and the members of this committee are the head of nursing in each of the hospitals in that particular state are members. And they are expected to report cases. And periodically, they are expected to visit the hospital and ensure how the nurses work, 
what are their challenges and how to their attitude. And uh, the airing one that I expected to be referred back to this committee and this committee investigated the cases that was reported and sent to the council because at the council of we have a tribunal. And this tribunal is also established to ensure that the airing licenses are furnished according to the law. Okay. And this is how we handle the uh, cases. Okay, I know that um, shortage of human resource for health is an issue. It's a global issue, but that is more pronounced in some countries. And we know that Nigeria belongs to you know those uh, some of those countries that have a shortage of human resource for health. Would you say uh, that we have enough uh, nurses in this part of the world? Going by the, the the WHO recommendation, talking about the ratio of nurses to patients. Yeah, I cannot say Nigeria we have enough, but we are not doing bad in terms of productions or training of nurses in the, because in this part of this uh, part of the world, I want to say clearly that uh, averagely Nigeria produces an average of about uh, eleven thousand nurses and midwives, and that are expected to meet the demands of Nigeria uh, public or Nigerians at large. And uh, in spite of all this, you find some of our nurses. And rated are one of the best in the world, and that's why you find there is higher uh, number of nurses living in this country for greener foster for any other reason. So we not mean that we have enough, but we are doing our best, and uh, the number of nurses we have, they are doing their best. And uh, one of the major challenge we have is the issue of employment, which is uh, general maintenance affecting any part of the country, especially at the state level and local government level. A country that still, you know, records high maternal and child mortality and knowing fully the critical role that nurses and midwives uh, have to play, especially when we're always, uh, you know, you know happy on the fact that we need skilled attendance at the point of uh, delivery. Yeah. I mean, so why, how do we close that gap? You know, we just mentioned you know, and unemployment. Should we be experiencing that you know, in this critical subsector? Uh, to close that gap, as a council, we are doing all that to cool to ensure that we make this uh, professional available. Just to tell you, last month we released the result of a uh, professional midwife. We had uh, about 2,648 were qualified midwives and they are now available. And the question is, who employ them? Now we left for the, the three tiers of government to employ them federal, state, and the, uh, and the local government. And uh, most of the time, last few uh, years back, about three to four years, the federal government came out with an initiative which required the mandatory community midwife, which necessitated every midwife must spend 12 calendar months in the rural areas before he, she is registered and practiced as a professional midwife. And that policy has yielded positive result. But unfortunately, that program was crushed by local government and the state, some of the state, because they are unable to fulfill part of the agreement. These midwives were forced in the rural areas. They were abandoned, no little allowances. Some of them could not have even the accommodation. Leaving only the federal that are given the substantial, paying the allowances of these midwives. So you find most of the times midwives were abandoned for a number of months, no salary, no allowance. Some of them were not even given the basic uh, facilities that require accommodation and what have been at the rural areas. Mm -hmm. But actually, that uh, one year mandatory has made a positive impact to the life of Nigerians and has reduced the toll of infant and mortality in this country. So, a lot uh, depends on uh, states and local governments really getting involved and doing the needful, playing their own parts where this is concerned to really make it work, right? Yeah, exactly. If, if the state and local government should now for this aspect, because the way the program is structured, at the end of 12 calendar months, a midwife is at liberty to be employed by the local government or the state, and she can be able to continue serving the community. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, even the allowances, the sum of the state are not paying. And this midwife, there was no option rather to leave the rural areas to the urban areas where they are employed mostly by the teachers. So a, lot of, a lot of them are even in even the countries. That's yes. why that's why we have the issue of brain drain in, uh, in the nursing profession, right? Uh, from our record, I want to tell you that uh, we have an average of about 3,500 nurses and midwives in this country. These are the ones that On an annual basis? On an right? annual basis. Yeah. That leave this country, these are the ones that apply through the verifications and letter of good standing before they leave. These are the ones that have record. What will all that leave this country through? Either a, my sister or, or undocumented. my... Undocumented. Undocumented. Wow. These are the 
one which we have because Nigerian nurses and midwives, I believe, are one of the best in the world. And uh, most of the part of the world, they are also looking for these nurses and midwives. Despite not only in Nigeria we have the shortage, other part of the world they are also having the shortage of midwives. So they are taking advantage of some of our shortcomings and now employ our nurses and midwives. Okay, so what, what are you doing to curb um, quackery and um, other vices that um, some of uh, you know, your nurses indulge in? I've had, <coughs> we've had cases of uh, fake nurses yeah, being we arrested here and there. What are you doing? Yeah, well, what we are doing as a council, we have a standing committee at the state level. And these committees are empowered by its relevant section of the act to uh, uh, go and visit any insurance institution at their state level, ensure these nurses are they qualified, are they licensed to practice, if they are not. And I want to acknowledge the effort of security agents that are teaming up with the three state nursing military committee. And most of them have been arrested and now been appear before a, a, a court of uh, jurisdictions and we have so many cases in Lagos, even here in Abuja. And where some of these that were arrested as crack nurses were arraigned before the court and the trial is ongoing as usual. So what about the ones going beyond your boundaries? We've uh, had cases where you see a nurse setting up a clinic in her home and you know playing the role of a doctor, a pharmacist and all of that. They are bound. How yeah, do you they are such out. What do you do to such? They uh, are still part process? of quacks, and these are within the jurisdiction of this committee to checkmate and see are they qualified, are they licensed, are registered by national military control practice. If they are not, then obviously they will be apprehended. Sometimes back, you inducted um, foreign trained nurses. Yeah. It has it always been? Yeah, the, the, these are also additional uh, uh, airport the country has been because. Nigerians, they have multiple opportunities living, going outside to be trained. And after you have trained, we have laid down guidelines to, before we register anybody that was trained outside the country. And that's what we did after they have undergo six months adaptation programs in the selected universities of their interest. They self passed the professional examination conducted by National Military Council. Then we induct them so that to ensure that we have certified them to work in Nigerian public, that we assure they are competent professionally to practice anywhere in Nigeria and beyond. Okay. That's what we do. What, what, what are the qualities of a good nurse? Well, a qualities of a good nurse, after attaining the required knowledge and skill, he or she must be dedicated, must be empathetic, must be uh, 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 competent, must be hardworking, must be a person who always show empathy and sympathy while caring for his client at all time. These are some of the qualities of being goodness. Because if I go to the hospital in my pains and a nurse is not helping matters with her attitude, how am I supposed to handle that? Or how are my family members supposed to handle that? Fine. This is, uh, that's why we, we make it open and even in each hospital we ensure we create what is called the quality assurance. It's part of the tool that we ensure each institution, especially the tertiary and secondary, we must have a department of nursing that is responsible for that. These are responsible to receive complaint from clients and it is suspected and that's why I tell you each member, the head of nursing at that institution is a member of that committee. And it's such cases are expected to be reported as reported by the family member for mishandling for any other ill treatment that was done and as long as the case comes down we have such cases open up to level of tribunal and as long as uh, such cases were investigated and we now uh, uh, make the, the nurse appear before the tribunal and now appear the consequences we have a number of different measures up to the withdrawal of licensing of that individual for a number of times for what he did to the client and to the public so all we are advising the client to be able or rather in the battery for such cases of the head of nursing services of that hospital and i'm sure they are ready to take relevant uh, sanctions on that area nurse okay just before we go how many registered nurses do we have at the moment uh presently we have over 330 thousand professional nurses and midwife okay. yes mm -hmm. and these are of, of different categories the general nurses which is about over 180 30,000, midwives over 120,000, while other uh, categories of specialities we refer as the 
and they are over and uh, <coughs> they are over uh, they are different cadres so in, uh, this that give us the number of over 330 thousand nurses okay so i'm sure nigerians look forward to you know uh, uh, having to deal with nurses who show empathy compassion all the beautiful things that uh, florence nightingale is known for i yeah. guess okay on that note we thank you so much uh farouk uh umar albuquer for making our time to join us on health options thank you very much uh, Moving on now, there is a quote that three cups of coffee a day keeps the doctor away. Just as experts have warned that too much coffee consumption can cause serious medical conditions. Interestingly, findings indicate that there is a growing taste for coffee consumption among Nigerians, particularly among the young, middle class and the well-traveled. Join us on our nature scanner as we take you through the good, the bad and the ugly side of coffee. The place of coffee is uh, actually controversial. Um, controversial scientifically. It's controversial because there are a lot of studies to show that uh, coffee is beneficial to health. There are also a lot of studies to show that coffee can have adverse effect on human health. Uh, health researchers uh, like us conclude that it is uh, safer to uh, encourage people uh, 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 to take coffee in moderate quantities uh, and then discourage people from becoming addicted to coffee. Coffee uh, is generally produced from, from roasted ground and roasted coffee uh, beans. And naturally, the process of roasting um, uh, results in production of so many uh, compounds that uh, are contained in coffee. Uh, by the way, coffee contains more than 1,000 different chemical compounds and um, many of them uh, are uh, useful and a lot of them are also uh, of adverse uh, effect to a man's health. Uh, caffeine is one of the most popular comp chemical components of uh, coffee. Caffeine itself uh, belongs to a group of chemical compounds we call um, methyl xanthine. Almost all of uh, coffee is absorbed in the stomach and the, and the small intestine and also distributed to all tissues of the body, including the brain. When people drink coffee, you see, the body has what we call adenosine risk. Their role is as a neuromodulatory uh, agents. You know, that way it affects the neurological system, the central nervous system, majorly uh, inhibitory effects. Now, what components of coffee, such as caffeine, does is to antagonize this inhibitory effect of this agent. When it antagonizes it, it means that technically it is stimulating the central nervous system. So we say caffeine stimulates the central nervous system. And stimulation of the central nervous system results in the person becoming agitated. In other words, the person becomes more active. Some people become hyperactive. It goes to tell you why some people will drink coffee and they're no longer able to sleep. It, tells, it, it, it also results in acute increase in blood pressure, or kind of. You see, so um, we don't call it hypertension at that stage because it's not, uh, it has to be sustained for it to become uh, clinically um, uh, described as hypertension, but it results in elevated blood pressure. You also see the person, um, it also increases diuresis. You see the person getting to urinate more often because most part of the, the system is now stimulated and so there's increase in metabolic activities. Remember that coffee has very good and pleasant 
aroma and flavor. Now, so together with the stimulatory effect of caffeine and this aroma, gradually you become addicted to taking coffee. You just have to take coffee all of the time. You become addicted to it. So you begin to calm down with the adverse effects of coffee. A standard cup of coffee, which is between 200 to 240 mils, or seven to eight ounces, contains about three to 400 milligram of coffee. This is a scientific, this is based on empirical studies in our laboratories. What has been proven scientifically is anybody taking between one to four cups of coffee a day is actually doing a good thing because all the different organs of the body such as the heart, the kidney, the liver, general body systems benefit when you take this minimal amount or volume of coffee in a day. However, scientific studies have also shown that excess of 7 to 10 cups a day is detrimental to health. It results in so many of the diseases that are found in, the, in our society today. There's a difference between brewing coffee and instant coffee or percolative coffee. When coffee is boiled, like you find in France expressos or Turkish uh, coffees, you are going to have a lot of two chemical compounds in coffee being extracted into the coffee in your coffee uh, core. They are called cafistol and kewel. These two compounds have been implicated in cardiovascular problems specifically. This is one of the easiest ways to have elevated cholesterol in, in the blood by drinking brewed coffee. In fact, our studies have shown that brewed coffee contains 10 times the amount of cafestol or kewel or caffeine compared to instant coffees. Fortunately, what I see a lot of us do around our own environment here is not brewing of coffee. I think I see a lot of people just put their coffee instantly, uh, prepare instant coffees and um, a drink. But if you go to uh, many of these countries, and I also know that a lot of our uh, uh, VIPs uh, who travel a lot to those parts of the world have copied it into Nigeria because I've been in the office of a very big man where the secretary was actually brewing coffee and everybody in the waiting room knew that something serious was being prepared. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the big man was actually um, preparing uh, for uh, death more uh, quicker than he should. Uh, do uh, by doing that kind of a uh, coffee preparation. Some of the problems that we also get from people that consume a lot of coffee is they are not that they are not just coffee drinkers. They are also alcoholics and cigarette smokers. So, any cigarette smoker or an alcoholic who is a coffee drinker is actually moving gradually to the grave um, and is the one that is preparing it for him or, or herself because nicotinic acid is one of the chemicals in coffee and cigarette smoking has a lot of nicotine you know so these are the complexities uh, surrounding this this beautiful gift of nature which we can use to the benefit of ourselves, but which, like we say in pharmacy, that every drug is a poison depending on the dosage or dose 
which you use. Like we have always told you on this program, moderation is key. That sipping coffee in reasonable amounts just might be one of the healthiest things you can do. Sticking for those boundaries shouldn't be hard for coffee drinkers in this part of the world. This is where we wrap up this edition of Health Options. You can watch the upload of these and other episodes of the program. Email us for your comments and contributions at healthoptions at nta.gov.ng. My name is Rabi Abdullah. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>